but what you want to do is is minimize the the effect of the trauma and have them see it differently you know we call it reframing so they yes it's a part of you it's it it's um i had a lady she um uh, uh she started well she came to me for weight loss but she had other issues but anyway after she lost all this weight that was her addiction by the way right and it'll come up this will make sense in one minute and she was doing fine, lost all this weight. Fine. I get to call, hey, Will, doc, Dr. Will, can you help me? I go, what? She goes, I'm having anxiety attacks. Been in the hospital three times. I'm like, yeah, sure, come in. And she and she goes, and I'm starting to eat again. I'm like, okay. So she comes in, we start talking. I go, what is it? And we're gathering information. And she can't, and I'm like lost. I can't figure out what the what what flipped her out. And she goes, I know it's not this, doc, but and I'm like, yeah, she's gonna tell me. She was, this was several years ago. And she was, when she was 16 in high school, so it was probably late 60s, early 70s, um, she worked at an ice cream parlor. And what happened at the ice cream parlor, the, the, the owner's son, guy owned a couple businesses, the ice cream shop, was home from college and was running the ice cream parlor. And she was there and she started flirting with, anyway, the guy raped her. You know, they would, they fool around a little bit, but then he ended up raping her. And I said, well, what happened? She goes, nothing. I, I couldn't say anything. They, first of all, say, I'm trying to catch a rich guy. Secondly, back then, you're old enough, they go, what did you do? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you, you, you did. Yeah, we're, we're still seeing it. No, no, you just changed your mind. Right. So she didn't say nothing. She even worked there the rest of the summer. Right? And I'm like, okay, so now she's a vice president, right? And she's been there forever and everything was fine. Her and her boss had to do all this work at night, right? Uh, you know, that I don't know. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know what I mean. So yes. at night, she's she's in this place, and after everybody left, and they would do whatever they had to do for the for this merge, that, and she would have an anxiety attack, right? And she would end up at the hospital. Think she's having a heart attack. Of course, our caring medical professionals, after the second one or third one, said, "Lady, you're nuts. Your heart is fine, right?" Mm -hmm. So she calls me up, and what I said was, um you know, it's your brain taking care of you. It's not going to let you put in that position. Because as she was telling me that story, one thing she did with her hand, <clears throat> when I was 16, her hand went right here, right? Which means that event is right here. It's there to protect her, mm -hmm. to never let her get in that situation again. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't want to take that away. We want to put it, you're not 16, honey, you're 53. Put it back where it should be. Mm -hmm. And you're an intelligent, articulate woman. It's a different time. If something happened now, what would you do? You'd call the police. You would, if you didn't kill the guy, you would do this, that. So we did a few things and it, it helped resolve the trauma. And if she hadn't, she, well, A, she would have went back to the food big time mm -hmm. because that was her self-medication. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of thing with trauma. And, you know, it's usually there. A lot of the PTSD symptoms are there to try to keep your ass alive. That's, that, you know, if you've been in combat, I guarantee you for a few years after that, you hear gunshots in an unexpected place, you're hitting the deck. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's, and part of that, I had one guy I was talking to about that. He goes, I'm like, you know, I'm like, do you want to fix it? And he goes, yeah. I go, okay, we need to reframe a few things. But actually, this is a pretty good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. I, I find that too. A lot of, um, a lot of what's going on is just a defense mechanism. We have some experience or evidence that we need to protect ourselves and this is a way to do it. And so that's what keeps happening. Yeah. And then the addiction, the alcohol, the drugs, food, gambling, sex, whatever the addiction is, that's a self-medication tool. Right. You know, if I have a few drinks, I can handle working with this guy. Go to KillabyCenter.com, Radical Recovery Summit. For access to the interviews, you can watch them free online for 48 hours after they air, or you could purchase an all-access pass, killabycenter.com.